Um, next presentation will be by uh, Jens Schirmer, who has been working a lot on urbanization effects on Orthoptera, and I think his presentation today is also on the question of how urbanization uh, affects morphology and behavior of grasshoppers. Thank you very much. Welcome. Um, so this is not me, as you can see. Uh, this is Florian Rech. Uh, Florian studied in his bachelor thesis the effects of urbanization on traits of Cratipus bigutulus, um, behavioral traits, and the morphology. Um, unfortunately, he cannot attend the meeting, so I'm uh, here to present his results. Is it this one? Yes. Um, so four years ago, in this very nice Smolenice castle, I had a presentation about urbanization and grasshoppers. Um, so urbanization, as you all know, um, is a major factor for global change. It's increasing worldwide. So we have uh, much areas which are um, increasingly urbanized. And uh, four years ago, I could show that um, increasing urbanization has a strong negative effect on orthoptera diversity. So this was a study done in Berlin. So a decrease in species richness and also functional diversity. And in the recent years, several other studies showed very similar patterns. Um, and also a recent global meta-analysis showed um, predominantly negative effects of urbanization on arthropod diversity. So these um, urbanization biodiversity relationships are relatively well studied and understood. But um, what is about species traits or the behavior of specific species? And there were very famous examples that species or animals can change their traits or adapt to, the, um, to urban habitats. So all of you know, um, I guess that, um, and this is the most famous example, birds can change their traits in terms of communication behavior. So it, um, could have been shown that some species, like here the great tits, uh, can adjust their songs and sing at higher um, frequencies to avoid signal degradation in noisy urban habitats. Um, the same was also shown for grasshoppers 10 years ago by Lampe et al. So again, an adaption in the communication behavior also for insects. But potentially many other traits are affected um, due to urbanization. So for example, in terms of morphology, so some studies showed that individuals from urban sites increased their size. Here an example for a grasshopper where the wings were longer in individuals coming from an urban site compared to individuals from a rural site. Um, and also other behavior traits might be affected, for example, the exploratory behavior, so measure of boldness more or less. Um, here is a study from Schütt et al. from Germany um, for carabid beetles. This is Carabus nemoralis, a very nice one. And um, they could show that individuals from urban sites showed a, a much higher exploratory behavior than um, individuals from rural sites. So Florian was uh, therefore interested if urbanization can also affect um, behavioral and morphological traits of Cortipus bigutulus, so as you know, a very common species in Central Europe. Um, and in particular, he was interested if urbanization affects the size of um, individuals coming from different uh, sites uh, regarding the urbanization level, and also in terms of the fluctuating asymmetry. Um, fluctuating asymmetry means small deviations from perfect symmetry into body parts. So if we have a high fluctuating asymmetry, um, so a high deviation in these two body parts, this means that the individual was exposed to environmental stress during the development. So this is the basic assumption. Um, further, he tested the boldness. So if individuals differ in their boldness behavior, um, and finally, also in their walking activity behavior. And we were also interested if there were differences between females and males. And therefore, um, Florian sampled Cortibus bigutulus in meadows around Karlsruhe. This is a larger city in southwestern Germany. 
and he sampled meadows with different urbanization level. So this was measured um, based on the percentage of impervious surface in the surrounding. And we had then five meadows with low urbanization level, so less than 10% impervious surface in the surrounding, five meadows with medium, and five meadows with high urbanization level. And then he collected more or less 10 individuals per site, and this yielded then in um, 92 females and 57 males. And then um, he brought the individuals into the lab, and uh, they were caged in mesocosms, uh, reared at standardized conditions in climate chambers, and they had 24 hours um, time for acclimatization before and between the experiments. So I will explain the experiments in the next slides. And after the experiments, he did some morphological measurements. So he measured the length of the femur and of the forewings. And based on this, he was also able then to quantify the fluctuating asymmetry, so the difference between the lengths in the two body parts. Um, so now the experiment. Um, the first one regarding boldness, this was um, <laughs> a very simple idea from Florian. Um, so the basic assumption was that um, organisms show some specific behavior when they are in a risky situation. Um, and some grasshoppers uh, seem to defend themselves by playing dead or show tonic immobility. And uh, he had the idea to, simulate, uh, to simulate the risky situation by grabbing simply the grasshoppers at the hind legs. Um, and then he measured simply the time the individual played dead. Um, I'm not sure if this is really a good idea, but um, we will see later on. So uh, I said, let's give it a try. OK, maybe, um, maybe it works. Um, he repeated this three times per individual, and then we took the mean. So this was really a very simple experiment. Uh, the second one was um, much more complicated. So this deals with the walking behavior or the walking activity. So we conducted, or he conducted, an open field test to observe the walking activity in an unknown area for the individual. And we used um, video recording, so video tracking of the individuals. So he constructed um, an artificial arena, as you can see, on the right, and we had a camera on top, and then um, individuals were recorded for 10 minutes, and we had this um, Etovision software, which is a video tracking software, which can automatically track the individual uh, walking uh, behavior. And based on this software, we then calculated, or again he um, calculated three different parameters. So the first one is simply the distance the individual traveled within these 10 minutes. So this is then expressed in centimeters. The second one is the mobility. And uh, this means the percentage of the time the individual was moving, but not the, the whole individual is moving. Um, this also includes only the movement of some body parts. So for example, if they um, move the antenna or if they just turn around or move a leg. This was also then tracked and called mobility. And finally, the, um, the time the whole individual moves, so really the time the uh, individual moves in a directed manner. Um, and this was then expressed in seconds. So these were the three parameters uh, indicating the walking activity of the individuals. OK, and now the results. I have only three slides for the results. Um, first of all, the size and the fluctuating asymmetry. Uh, on the left, you can see the size. Um, of course, we have difference between the females and the males. Um, but as you can see, there was no effect of urbanization. So we tested in the models always urbanization, um, sex, and the interaction to disentangle if uh, the effect of urbanization differs between females and males. So urbanization, in our case, did not affect the size of Cotypus bigutulus. But as you can see on the right, um, we found a strong effect on the fluctuating asymmetry for both the uh, asymmetry of the femur and also for the four wings. So um, 
especially the individuals from the highly urbanized areas, here always indicated in red, showed a much higher fluctuating symmetry than the individuals from the uh, low urbanized meadows here in green. For the wing asymmetry, um, also at least as a trend, urbanization and sex um, the interaction, at least as a trend, was significant. And here you can see that this uh, wing asymmetry was especially pronounced in the males. So we had a higher fluctuating symmetry um, in the males than in the females. Then um, the boldness, also unsure if this really uh, was a sound experiment, but nevertheless, the uh, results um, showed a clear pattern. Indeed, we found that individuals from um, the highly urbanized meadows showed a much shorter time um, playing dead. So the tonic immobility was uh, lower in these um, individuals from the highly urbanized sites, indicating that these uh, individuals are bolder than uh, the individuals from the lower or medium uh, urbanized sites. So at least something seems to go on there. And then finally, um, the walking activity. So on the left, the travel distance in centimeters. And here you can see no effect of urbanization, also no difference between uh, females and males. Also the interaction was not significant. So um, the total distance seems to be not affected by urbanization. But in contrast, uh, as you can see in the middle and on the right, um, there was a very strong significant effect of urbanization on um, the mobility, so the percentage the individual was active with the antenna or the uh, other body parts. Um, so here we had an increase of almost 30%. So the individuals were more or less 30% more active when they um, were from the highly urbanized meadows compared to the meadows from the lowest urbanization. And similar, the time moving. So in seconds here, um, also increased by more or less 24%. So again, um, strong increase in um, the movement time of um, the individuals. So to conclude, um, Florian could show that urbanization had no effect on the size in our study of Cotibus bigotulus, um, but he found very strong effects on the fluctuating asymmetry in both body parts. So this could indicate that individuals are exposed to environmental stress during the development. He could also show that um, urbanization favored the occurrence of bolder individuals, indicated by this simple experiment. Um, and he could also show that urbanization has a strong effect on the walking activity. So individuals from highly urbanized meadows were much more mobile than from um, meadows with low urbanization. And this um, means that urbanization can not only affect biodiversity, but um, of course can affect morphological and behavioral traits of grasshoppers or insects maybe in general. And the fact that we found these different uh, differences in the traits um, between individuals from the different urbanized meadows, this could really indicate that um, Cortipus bigutulus show a high phenotypic plasticity, so it's very flexible, and this could indicate uh, the success of the species um, or can explain why the species is also able to live uh, even within highly urbanized areas. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jens. Very interesting presentation. There are other questions. There's one in the internet. There's one online question from Klaus Riede. Um, wouldn't it be more adequate to explain increased boldness by terms familiar to neuroethologists -eth such as habituation or arousal? Um, maybe I didn't get the question very well. Can you translate it? <laughs> Yeah, into a more easier words for me. I don't. 
or maybe just repeat it, but uh, I'm not sure what, what it exactly meant, sorry. Yeah, I also have to think about what exactly, Klaus, can you please <laughs> <laughs> write us exactly what you mean? Habituation, I mean, they were all raised in similar conditions. If I yeah, so, so I mean, they were all sampled uh, at the same time. They were weird under standardized conditions. So I mean, the difference, differences we observed should really come from the different um, habitats they were sampled from. Um, I mean, the main problem in all these uh, urbanization studies is how to define urbanization and the gradient. I mean, you have a rather small sample size and high standard deviations, and uh, you made these observations in, in, not in the field, but in, in the laboratory. This would, of course, mean that all animals have some uh, genetic basis for their behavior. So did you have a look on, on, on the history of your sites? Because many meadows which are now maybe really in the middle of, uh, of an up, build up area, maybe only a few years ago, could have been uh, at, the, at the edge of, of the city or of the urbanized, urbanized area. And this should, of course, be uh, taken into account. Uh, and uh, did, you, did you have a look on, on, on the history of your, I think, only two or three uh, meadows from the so-called urbanized area, and also of the, of the history of the rural or more or less median, uh, median uh, sites? Um, no, I have no idea about the age of the sites. Um, regarding your first uh, remark, urbanization um, is in most studies calculated by using impervious surface, and this makes really sense because uh, all other environmental stress um, caused by urbanization is associated with this amount of impervious surface. So we have so I know, very much urbanization studies and if we have a high amount of impervious surface, this means we have high noise pollution, we have high light pollution, we have high atmospheric pollution. So I think this can really be a very effective way to express urbanization. Um, Sure, this was a bachelor thesis, so the sample size is rather low, but I think 150 individuals is also quite okay. Um, so, from my point of view, I mean, 500 would be better, 1,000 even better, but I think it's more or less a solid basis. Okay, I, I think we have to go on. Thank ah, you very okay. much again. <laughs>